What is up, everybody? Hopefully, everyone is having a, a great Thursday. We are back on the new uh, Season 8 account. Giants Unleashed Finn Balor is getting ready to start. We are 30 days into Season 8. We are 30 days into this new Season 8 account. Doing uh, player guides and tips and tricks and all of that stuff. Well, being that we're 30 days in now, we have stacked up quite pretty decent cards. I think it's about time that we talk about decks for all new players. If you have not played an event yet, Giants Unleashed is certainly a pretty good one to start with. It is really easy to play, very relaxed, very low key. Um, stress level is definitely really low. It is based on your top eight only, regardless of Giants Unleashed deck. But I do, this is one of my favorite events in WWE Supercard. We're 30 days in on it. And so I, this is going to be our very first event of this account. So I think in this video, we're going to talk about decks. I'm going to go through all of the decks for all the PvP, or uh, the wild, the um, all the events, Giants Unleashed, solo events, and stuff like that. So if you enjoy the video... Hit that thumbs up. Let me know how your new Season 8 is going. Let me know if you're a new player and this is going to be your very first event. Since Giants Unleashed is solely based on points, obviously the better the card, the more points you can get. So you kind of want to focus your arrows with the cards you have based on your worst cards in here. And so looking at this right here, you see I got a couple lefts in six or one left in six million one right in six million but i have my ups as five million six million and seven million so obviously the up arrows is kind of where i'm lacking right now when we look at my new season eight cards i only have one up arrow that i still have yet to level up and that is the nash carter so if i want to level up any other up arrows i need to go all the way back into season seven stuff we have one up arrow right here, and we have another up arrow at zero level in which I could upgrade. So if I want to focus on up arrows, increasing my stats of my up arrows, I wouldn't worry about any of these other cards, leveling up any of these other cards except for my up arrows. Now as far as other improvements that I could make, if you saw or remember the deck, I also had one left, one right, and one up or one down i mean that could also be improved from old cards old season seven cards so when i'm looking at season eight right here i have one right arrow that is level zero and i have a couple down arrows which is also level zero so i wouldn't worry about leveling up the nikki ash i wouldn't worry about leveling up oh i take that back i would just level up the shinsuke because there's a down arrow right there and i wouldn't worry about leveling up these two myers I would just focus on the Shinsuke, focus on the Sammy, and then level those two up because those two would help my Giants Unleashed decks. Now having a good basis for both male and female lefts, right, ups, downs for a piece, I think that is pretty much a pretty good base standard to set for the entire game, except for a couple game modes in which I sandbag a little bit. Now that we talked about Giants Unleashed, let's go through all the rest of them fairly quickly. I guess and um, yeah and you'll just have to let me know if you play something a little bit different or not when it comes to wild and wild Wednesdays what I do when I uh, do this is I go into here when I swap out I put in all uh, I put in all nightmares and then after I put in all nightmares for the entire deck then what you do is you back out of wild go back in and the decks you face are going to be low tier vanguard you hit auto it puts in your best cards and you'll have three games of guaranteed perfects in order to uh, get your wild wednesday done and then you repeat the same process put in all nightmares then back out and then go back into wild, hit auto, it puts in your best cards, play three more games, you get perfects, back out, etc. So that's the easiest way to do it for wild. And the reason why you can't really put in a specific deck and guarantee yourself, now you can still get perfects, but you can't necessarily guarantee yourself because it doesn't like mimic your deck. 
if you are a certain tier, sometimes you'll face a deck that has one card that's really, really high and then the other cards are really low. Or they might be all balanced. It's just really, uh, it really just depends. It's like luck of the draw. So sometimes you'll get perfect, sometimes you won't. So it's just easiest to just put in Nightmares, back out, and switch up your deck. War, on the other hand, does mimic your deck. So you can play PvP and do War, and how I do it is I just set it up with all Nightmares. I have a really good support card, and then my action supports cover what my support card doesn't. This is guaranteed perfect every single time, no matter what. Royal Rumble, same exact thing. I use all Nightmares except for two cards that I am training so if I want to do matches on them which we haven't talked about in one of these videos for doing pros and stuff just yet but uh, if you have two cards that you do want to pro and uh, like I said in other videos I would not recommend proing a card that is not season 8 I wouldn't even do it even if it's SummerSlam 21 after doing for the first 30 days you do not need to pro any card that is season 7 and under I would just focus, and you don't even necessarily have to do pros on Season 8, but um, if you have a Valhalla, you definitely obviously want to do that, but Maelstrom and Valhalla, Maelstrom pros and Valhalla singles are pretty close to each other, so uh, maybe you just choose not to do any unless you get a Valhalla, that's, you know, perfectly fine, but either way, if I want to do matches and I want to train my cards, this is the deck that I use. Just these two, whatever ones I'm doing the training for, and then the rest of them. Uh, Women's Royal Rumble, exactly the same thing. Elimination Chamber, this is what I play all the time for PvP. I just put in all Nightmares. I have my one support card. I put it on auto, and I win every single time. Unless, of course, I face an actual person. If I face a person, then... It's kind of up in the air because that means he has pretty close to the same thing that I do and he's might play it smart, you know, but unlike the and have a good support card. So it might be a little bit harder. Elimination Chamber, same exact thing. All nightmares. Money in the bank. I use all nightmares. Now, uh, eventually the time is going to come in which I do put in better cards because the max points you can get is 50 super coins, 25 super coins, and then a doubler for finishing it. And in order to do that, you need better cards. If you have crappy cards in here, it only maxes out at like 11 or 12 super coins per round, and then that is double because the cards are bad. The idea with Money in the Bank is that the decks have to be balanced. So whatever tier, the best tier that you can do in which all the cards are perfectly balanced, that would be the most ideal. So for example, if you have a whole bunch of uh, Mayor cards and or Meyer cards and you want to um, put all those in completely leveled up at 100, all of them are Meyer. Uh, that's perfectly fine. You could do that, but I'm I'm perfectly satisfied with just doing this. Actually, on this account, what I'm doing is taking all of the holiday cards. I'm doing all the matches on the holiday cards, these crappy nightmares and primals and stuff, and I'm gonna pro those up. I'm going to F3 them and then use those for my money in the bank. Road to Glory, pretty much the best deck you can possibly get. And uh, in this case, sometimes you want to worry about tags on the lower cards. Um, but most of the time, it's just the best cards you can put in there is what you're going to have to put in there. Ring Domination, on the other hand, this is one of them in which uh, you put in all of your best cards. Now, when you play Ring Domination, you do put in all of your best cards, but... The idea is, is you want to go, you want to sandbag at least one card, like right here. I am Maelstrom Plus, and so the idea would be that I would sandbag this one single card all the way down to where I'm base tier Maelstrom. So now looking at this deck right here, being Maelstrom Plus and base tier Maelstrom is not going to make a difference. It's not going to matter. Uh, you're still gonna only max out at the exact same card and so the idea is is that if you sandbag and go all the way down to the very bottom of whatever tier you're in whatever tier you're in 
then um, you're gonna get easier decks. And so I should get every time I or every time I play uh, Ring Domination, what I'm gonna get is uh, Meyer decks like Meyer Plus or Meyer Plus Plus or whatever. And so they're gonna be lower tiered decks which will make my life a lot easier in ring down. Last man standing, we did just have this event. Now you cannot do anything about this event. This is one of the events for new players that's gonna be really hard to play and be competitive in because as a new player, you're really just trying to focus on getting the best cards you have and leveling them up. It's really tough to compete in this event if you do not have a fully balanced deck. I have a 16 million, I have an 11 million. That's a big gap. As I go on in arenas, it's going to get probably too difficult for me. Sensational Sherry, 12 million. Bianca Belair, 7 million. That's going to be really hard on the female side going through it. So as a new player, at the beginning, Last Man Standing is one of the events that I would just pretty much ignore. Giants Unleashed and Women's Giants Unleashed. We talked about champions. This is another one in which Clash of Champions. This is another one in which I would completely ignore it. Don't even do it. To me, this is way harder than even uh, Last Man Standing as far as deck balancing goes. 16 million to 6 million. Yo, the game would be disgustingly broken fighting or playing against the AI. It just would not work. It would not be a fun experience. So that would be the other event in which I would ignore is Last Man Standing and Clash of Champions, at least in the beginning. War games, you can certainly play. Uh, it is based on your top eight. And so that makes it a lot easier. You can pretty much put in whatever deck you want. The easiest thing that I do, at least on my main account, is that I balance this entire deck with the exact same tier and then put in one really crappy card. Now, next time War Games comes around, I'm actually just going to put in All Nightmares. And I'm going to try to do it using All Nightmares and I'm going to see how it works. Because it's based on your top 8 as far as what, um, what card you can get. And so having a balanced deck makes it so much easier. Women's War Games, same exact thing. Code Breaker, you can't edit the deck, I should say. It's kind of the same thing as Clash of Champions and um, Last Man Standing. But the uh, difference with this one is, is that at least with Code Breaker, if you balance it towards Giants Unleashed, you know, lefts, rights, ups, and downs, this event is still definitely, definitely doable even with not quite as good a deck. That's why if you have good lefts, good rights, good ups, good downs for a piece, you're good for Code Breaker. You're good for Women's Code Breaker. Now with King of the Ring, you can certainly do King of the Ring, but I still don't necessarily think King of the Ring is worth it. Uh, this is my best deck deck I put in, and it is just Meyer tier. Um, getting a Meyer card obviously would help if I do win and that would be fine but honestly survivor is just so much easier survivors based on your top eight it goes by so much quicker and you don't have to necessarily worry about uh, having your cards locked in for 24 hours or whatever just in case you get a pro or want to do something with it because if you start king of the ring and a card is in there you can't take it out you can't pro it you can't put it in anything so you got to leave it in king of the ring survivor is just so much easier to do it lasts so much faster or it goes through so much quicker and it's based on top eight instead of king of the ring deck so I still wouldn't even worry about King of the Ring. Don't even do that. Just play Survivor. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the decks. Going through all of them and pretty much, hopefully, everything that you needed to know. Now, obviously, we're not playing any of those game modes. So uh, getting tips and tricks and stuff on how to do that. Um, we haven't got to that point, obviously, yet. Giants Unleash is pretty self-explanatory. There's not really too many... Uh, I, I guess there is a few on like which arrows to play when, but I think that uh, the ease of figuring it out is pretty simple. Um, the rest of the game modes, you know, we'll tackle them whenever we get there. But hopefully, at least for all the new players, that gives you kind of a basis on what you should put in your deck or try to look out for or try to upgrade when it comes to 
playing all of the events except for those except for those other two Clash of Champions and Last Man Standing. It's just going to take a little time, a little bit better balancing in order to be competitive in those. But the rest of them you certainly can play uh, at this point and certainly can get some decent cards. But either way, let me know in the comments, you know, if you use something else or do something else. If you have a, another idea for some beginner guide videos, you know, let me know and uh, we'll see if we could do that. But until next time, guys, hopefully y'all have a good event. Our very first event on this account, Giants Unleashed. And I do want to mention this, actually. I actually, before we go, I do want to mention, uh, looking at these milestones right here, I can pull, I can get this Finn Balor right now. It shows me that I can get the Finn Balor at 167 million. My main account says 200 million. Now, obviously, I've never played two accounts. I've never seen what it looked like being in a maelstrom tier i didn't even think you could get the event card as maelstrom tier but it's kind of interesting that it shows it to be 167 million and on my main account it shows it as 200 million in which i'm valhalla tier so i don't know what's going on with that the deck difference between this deck and my deck on my main account is not 33 million worth i can promise you that Either way, though, guys, um, I'll see y'all next time. Y'all take it easy. I'm out. Peace.